Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. On today's episode, Sting's final match went down at AEW Revolution. And what a match it was. Sort of emblematic of his entire run in AEW with Darby Allen. Fun, probably too much of a risky spot from Darby Allen. But contrary to what I I think what a lot of people thought was going to have happen, uh, Tony Khan and uh, staying in the Young Bucks, evidently all elected to have Sting go out on top, not on his back. I thought that was an awesome, fitting end to a career. I know the, the the trope in pro wrestling can often be, you know, get the other guy over on your way out. I think a, a career like Sting's is one of those things where you don't do that. Yeah, especially like, you know, as it relates to his entire last run at AEW, which has been an absolute highlight of, of the company's history, mm-hmm. the guy goes out on top, and uh, and I, I I think his run in AEW and this last match, um, all just really really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we could we could we could maybe quibble with with Darby taking the death defying stunts a bit too far with that dive off the the ladder, but all told, um, you know, both Darby and Sting said in advance of their of their match tonight that they want this to be a match remember and some people might rem- remember the match because of the derby spot and, and, and but i think all told story they told uh the 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 way they 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 honored sting's career and legacy in the history of pro wrestling they had his kids out there dressed as surfer sting and, and wolfpack sting they, they did a terrific video package in advance yeah. of his entrance yeah yeah um they had steamboat and flair sit ringside they had a uh, Magnum TA and, mm-hmm. and Scotty Riggs. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, gosh, who else was there? Um, uh, Koloff, the, Nikita Koloff. Yeah, Koloff, yeah, Nikita Koloff. Yeah. In, uh, in the crowd ringside. Um, you know, in, in terms of honoring the long uh, history Sting has had professional wrestling, in terms of giving us a match and a spectacle that we're going to remember and talk about, mm-hmm. you can't really ask for a better way to go out as a pro wrestler than what we saw tonight. You can't ask for a better career. I mean, it's no. it's honestly, it's it's a top. I don't know what career, but and and honestly, it is one of those where, you know, it's it's a shame his WWE run went the way that it did. I thought there was some pretty cool stuff there too, um, but uh, but really, his career outside of WWE, man, I don't know if you can ask for a better one. You know what I, I mean? Know. Like in terms of like who's the top guy to do it the best outside WWE, uh, you know, especially with the, with, you know, from guys who really sort of, I guess, peaked, you know, during the, the nineties. Yeah. Um, and on man stings there. I mean, it, it's funny because I, you know, you see obviously today, especially on Twitter, a lot of, you know, uh, homage is a lot of tributes, I should say to sting. And, and somebody posted up, you know, the very first time he was on like NWA TV. Yeah. And uh, it was Shivani sort of introducing the character Sting. And from the beginning all the way up to the Crow Sting and the various iterations, the guy had like just the best packaging and seems like a really good guy, a really swell guy from like every account. Um, And uh, and yeah, you you love to see a guy have that kind of longevity, Mm -hmm. have that kind of career who does seem to be. A, you know, a, a good human being as yeah, well. Totally, totally. But um, uh, but the, the 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 packaging of Sting is just it's next to the his his, his reinvention to the Crow character, and then even on into like the Wolfpack, and then the silly Joker stuff in TNA, which a lot of people swear by. Um, and then coming back around to the Crow stuff in AEW, it, it's been sort of a low key like reinvention on his part that like has been very very effective over the years. Yeah, it has been, and. It, 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 one thing amongst many you can give Sting credit for is not letting the wrestling industry pass him by. You know, he he's he stayed with the times. He stayed relevant. Mm-hmm, you yeah. know, and 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 he's not one of those older wrestlers who's like, "Oh, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that." He's out there doing the crazy stuff that 
not to the same degree that Darby does, but he's trying to, he's keeping up. Oh, you know? dude, he's doing his part, you know, and, and, and he's, he's, he's always found a way to stay relevant. You know, when, when, uh, the crow sting, uh, came around, you know, you, you can maybe make the case that surfer sting by that point kind of runs course. Oh, absolutely. Wasn't exactly capturing the zeitgeist like it did in, in the late eighties. I uh, do. You know, we talked about this, not to cut you off, but real quick, like, because you're mentioning that, um, we talked about when Scott Hall passed, how much of an influence he had on like me personally sticking around and watching because I thought that that character and that person, I just thought that there was something extra special about him, something that seemed relevant, you know, when you got Hulk Hogan running around who I was a Hogan fan, even in the NW eight in the NWO days. Um, cause I wasn't watching when he was in WWF, but Sting's character, when I walked into wrestling, when you and I started becoming friends, you know, it was basically in advance of Starcade 97. Mm -hmm. And that was the first big WCW pay-per-view that I watched. And Sting was cool as hell. And I yep. it didn't really, but like, I was a fan of The Crow. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. You got this dude who's kind of dressed up like The Crow. And then like afterwards, I learned that he was a smiling surfer guy. What the hell is the, like, there was trauma behind that character's reinvention yeah, and, and him at the end of every nitro in 1997, 1998 coming down and, you know, beating up on the, on the NWO. That was cool shit. I, we was. saw the clip the other day of, uh, of sting, you know, anchoring a DDP to him and yeah. then being lifted up. And I'm like, that's a ballsy ass it is. move. So it's not like he is, you know, uh, averse or has been in the past to risky stunts like that because of all the zip lining. Stuff. And he right. mentions that he mentioned that at the close of the show, he grabbed the mic and he says, talks about how, Darby is a risk taker, but you know, throughout his career, he has two, and that's just one example. Um, you know, it's 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 been a hell of a career for Sting, nearly forty years in the business, or might be forty years in the business to go all the way back to when he first started. Um, and yeah, you can't you can't ask for a better career from for a pro wrestler at all. You know, yeah. and he's go he went out on his own terms. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and you're right. I think it was the right call to have him go out a winner because. You know, you can make the case that he's one of the greatest to ever do it, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and I know the time honored trope is you go out on your back and help put somebody over. But man, in terms of this being the main event, sending that crowd home happy and feeling like they really witnessed something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sting right. had to win. That's dude. That's the thing. You can't you can't do it any other way. You really no. can't. He's not no. his is not is not your average normal career where you would do something like that. It just it just isn't. Yeah, it's not. Um, it's not. So, yeah, but otherwise, uh, AEW Revolution, you know, it was more than just one match. There was uh, one absolutely mind-blowing, phenomenal match as well. Will Ospreay versus Kanosuke Takeshita. We kind of figured that would be the case, and it really illustrated why Will Ospreay, A, is such a good fit in AEW, um, B, why it, it just works so perfectly for him. Um, and see what the future uh, kind of it looks like for AEW because he's obviously going to be a huge part of that future. Yes. Um, you know, he, he really does look like a million bucks. You and I are big fans of the wrestling. We've become big fans of how he's presented as a character mm -hmm. um, on TV, whether it's, you know, in New Japan or now that is an AEW. Talk a little bit about this match what it means in terms of setting the setting the table for Will Ospreay and AEW. I mean, you got to assume before match one tonight for Will Ospreay that he was in line for a significant push. You don't bring a wrestler of the reputation of Will Ospreay into your company, you would think, and have him sit at catering in three weeks, you know? Mm -hmm. They're lining him up for huge things. Um, and we knew this match tonight was going to be something special and didn't disappoint in any, 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 by any stretch of the imagination. Takeshita one of the best wrestlers in the world. Um, the show throughout from opening bell to the close, as you'd expect from AW pay-per-view was filled with really entertaining action in the ring. Um, and the pace of the show was really good. It, you know, the four hours felt like it flew by, you know, dude, um, I'll be honest with you. Like once we started taking the, the pre-show out of the equation and I'll be honest with you, like, there was a period of time when it felt like they were jamming those matches into the pre-show and it sort of meant something to the story where mm -hmm. they were really just sort of, you know, basically taking advantage of like a six hour pay-per-view window Yeah, when they would have like, I think they've had, didn't they used to have like two hours, two hour kickoffs? Uh, the the kickoff show tonight was an hour and a half. To, oh, it was an hour and a half tonight. Okay. Hour and a half okay. Like, 
three thirty um, Pacific. But you know, given that the matches in the kickoff aren't quite as consequential uh, these days, you know, I'm not going to advocate anybody skipping it. If you enjoy it, you enjoy it. That's awesome. Um, but in terms of us trying to keep up the engagement and then doing this review afterwards, hey, you know, that's just how we've elected to do it. We don't have unlimited en energy like we may have used to, uh, did in our 20s, you know what I mean? You know, I thought that Glowberry Prime was going to give it to me, but... Uh, well, you got the Thirst Quencher one, not the energy one. You got to try the energy in the can. Well, you know, hydration Maybe that'll can help. do it. Hydration can help, sorry. I don't like those energy drinks. I don't like those energy drinks. You don't want to do that in the evening <laughs> hours, that's for damn sure. Let's get back to, let's get back to Osprey and Takeshita. Two two wrestlers who operate with such urgency in the ring and makes you feel like every move they do has purpose and meaning and matters. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's nothing that Will Ospreay does in the ring that feels like it's filler. That it's, it's there just to add time to the match. You know what I mean? The, the Everything I, he, he done he, does feels like it matters. You know, dude, the, honestly, the closest comparison, because I've, you know, you and I have kept tabs on Will Ospreay, obviously, mm -hmm. for a long time now since he was in the Indies and you know, early in his New Japan career and all that. But like the thing that really stands out is something that you just noted. And it was something that I also noticed in Kenny Omega back in 2017 when I first started watching New Japan, when a lot of us started first watching New Japan, yeah. is that even the smallest things have like a legitimate motivation behind them. When he comes off the ropes from an Irish whip, and lands in like a, a, a an abdominal stretch position, and he has to sort of stop himself in order to get in there. It's those little things. He doesn't move into position. He makes it look like this is the position that he's trying to wrangle his way into. And that extra stuff, every single move that he does is informed by the physics of the situation, not just getting to the next spot. Yeah. And that is such a breath of fresh air um, and we see that from Will Ospreay. And on top of that, the storytelling in the ring is like unmatched. It's such, it's such, it's so good. It's it so good. phenomenal. It and, really good. and, really and good. that's the thing about AEW is that they're best when they're telling those really great stories in the ring. And, uh, and that's what we got tonight with him and, and Takeshita. I'm looking forward to, I think, I think Will Ospreay's in the absolute right spot. And especially with Okada coming in, man, they've got some pieces that you know, they can really they can really move forward with now. You got Okada, you got Osprey, you got Swerve, you got Hangman. Uh you got Jay White that if they can get him off the kickoff show and on the main card, he he could be a foundational piece as well. Oh, that'll happen. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. There's there's so much depth right now in AEW. It's just now it's the hope that creative does these talented wrestlers uh the, the, you know get get some of the storylines and into the matchups they need to start elevating themselves and therefore the company. That's kind of the crossroads the AEW is at now. And I feel like they're kind of getting back on track post-Continental Classic because, you know, whatever it was, my Tony Khan made the realization, this is what we do best as mm -hmm. a company, is telling stories in the ring yeah, and, 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 and motivating those matches with segments outside of it, but not trying to be WWE light, which is what they kind of were for a lot of 2022 and, or sorry, 2023. Yeah, it felt the, like they, they were trying to mimic that presentation. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And they do seem to be with the dynamites lately, especially. I do think that like right now they still need to sort of figure out, OK, how do we best utilize Rampage and Collision? Because those are kind of not a whole lot, even on Collision this week. And I know they're in advance of a pay-per-view, so it, it may be they just thought of it as sort of a throwaway. But like it wasn't a great collision this week. But the dynamites every Wednesday, they've been really good lately. Because they've got some stories that are actually that are actually working, yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, speaking of stories that are working, sort of went down the way we saw it going down. Uh, Swerve uh, losing out to Samoa Joe because Hangman ends up tapping out. Now it didn't quite go to the fantasy book level that we had it at, where Hangman realizes that he's in a bad spot. And if he taps out, like he might not have to tap out, but seeing Swerve on the horizon leads him to tap out and he just takes the L. That didn't, and I don't even know if I like that, to be honest with you. Deranged Hangman is a hell of a character. Yeah. Um, he did end up tapping out to Samoa Joe and Swerve, who elected not to go the low route this time. Prince Nana offering up the headpiece to try to use as a weapon. And Swerve says, I'm not going to do it that way. Um, 
you know, I, it, look, they ran a promo for the April 21st pay-per-view dynasty. What's the first thing that showed up on that promo package? Oh, it was a swerve? It was swerve. It was, it was a, lot of... <laughs> a lot of swerve. It was swerve voiceover, too. There was uh, some sound bites from swerve there. Yeah, too. right. Yeah. The first thing you saw with, like, you know, AEW Presents, and it's, like, all just swerve right there, dynasty. I'm like, yeah. all right, so that'll work. Yeah, he's going to win the title probably there. I don't think they're going to wait till like, Wembley or Double or Nothing or something like that. I just yeah. think it's going to be Swerve. According to Fightful Select, a report just dropped. Go subscribe to Fightful Select. Yes. Um, looks like Hangman's going to be taking some time off now. Yeah. So that kind of clears the road or clears the way mm -hmm. uh, for Swerve versus Joe one-on-one. -on -one. You got to think Swerve's going to win that title. If that's the matchup, yeah. If if, his, if if that is indeed the matchup and, and Hangman is going to be off TV for a spell, at least – uh, was it April twenty first? Is 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 a uh, dynasty? April twenty first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so if if Hangman's gonna be off TV for a month and a half and not there to potentially cost Swerve that match, then yeah, you got to think a one on one bout against Joe. You gotta you gotta put Swerve over there. Heck yeah. I I would imagine. I would imagine. When is big business? A couple weeks. That is thirteenth. Okay. All right. Ten days. Wouldn't surprise me if maybe because didn't the All Star Scramble wasn't that for a title shot? Yeah, yeah. So it could be uh, Wardlow who won the scramble as predicted. I think uh, so. I think that um, would probably could be, be the cash case. in a title opportunity there against Joe, and maybe we have the return of MJF to 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 cost Wardlow that match, and then you could start really in earnest the undisputed kingdom storyline with MJF coming back. Um, and and you know we don't know how much longer Adam Cole's going to be out. He did make a brief appearance tonight. You know, you know what they could do? You know what they could do? If Wardlow loses against Samoa Joe, um, Undisputed Kingdom, now that Roderick Strong has an international title, they might kick Wardlow out of the group. Um, and, uh, and then maybe his feud will sort of turn towards those guys. Cause maybe. I just don't know when MJF is going to come back. You I know what I mean? Like we, we haven't heard word one. Well, you know, if, if the, it was the shoulder, that was the major issue. And if, you know, if he could rehabilitate it and avoid surgery, I don't, you know, the, obviously that time frame is much shorter than if he had surgery done, which would keep him out several months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. That's assuming How if long he actually has he been resigned, gone you know, it's been what, since December, December thirtieth was his yeah so it's been two months it's been two it's two been months two months change okay. yeah okay all right yeah. yeah yeah who knows um so yeah but no I you know uh I thought it was still a really good triple threat match yeah a lot of a lot of good again a lot of good story beats within the match itself you know that sort yeah. of inform what you do next and that's that's sort of AW strong suit right that's there. how you want to propel stories along um. Probably the most surprising outcome of the evening was in the uh, FTR. Drop my pen. Blackpool Combat Club tag match. Given what happened last time we saw those competitors in the ring, you'd think, all right, FTR is going to win this. No. They got wrecked by Blackpool yeah. Combat Club. It they took really that L. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did. You know, I, 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 I'm assuming this is just meant for a little bit of long term booking in so. terms of yeah. Sting and Darby Allen. Obviously, one tonight, retaining the titles, but Sting's done, which means Darby's either going to have to find a new partner. I kind of doubt he would do that. I wonder if Darby would just sort of think, I've had Sting. I'm on my own now. I don't, I'm not going to have another partner, so I'm just going to give these titles up. What do you well, think? here's another thing. Darby's set to go climb Mount Everest sometime in the next few months, so uh, I don't know if he's in a position where he can say, hey, new tag partner, join me. Let's defend these titles. He's got to go like prepare to climb Mount Everest I'll believe that when I see it okay. I'm assuming he's sticking around until he doesn't because like I don't know like is there even a like isn't there like a window or something I where you need April was like one of the windows but I could be wrong okay well, maybe we had a I'm conversation right. in chat uh, uh one of the other pay-per-views when uh talking about that mm -hmm. when he yeah climbing, oh your door's opening Ooh. it's a ghost Ooh. gypsy learn how to turn the handle it's kind of really crazy. yeah how'd she do that without <laughs> thumbs Oh man, who needs thumbs? Just starts batting at it with the paw. Yeah, huh? you got you got the paw thing, and you just do that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh nope. I know All this right. thing. Go ahead, talk about something else. All right, I'll talk about something else. There's a lot to talk about. Um, let's see here. So uh, Eddie Kingston got Brian Danielson to finally shake his hand. Apparently, there's a really good backstage bit between the two. Of them. I haven't had an opportunity to watch yet. Um, but uh, uh, it seems like now that Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston may be friends. 
when oh yeah I mean, we haven't enemies. seen the we haven't seen the promo yet haven't but everybody yet, says no. that there's a, a a frenemy uh promo yeah like a very nice one a good yeah they're buddies now at they're least mutual now. respect now um hey d bright come check out this pie <laughs> and then, Why is it calling D. Bryant? That makes I don't any know. sense. I don't know. Danielson's like, is there is there dairy in this? Because I think Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson vegan. vegan. So yeah, like, probably. Is, yeah. is there dairy in this? <laughs> He's like, like, I, I don't know. It's, I know delicious is inside. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Danielson's like, I, I right, know well, delicious <laughs> is inside. <laughs> it's going to make you have, it's going to make you tap out the flavor. I tell you what. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's gonna kind of kawada kick your taste buds. <laughs> Brian Dan is like, sorry, Daddy, you can have my piece. It's gonna oh, I'll, I'll, for here me. I'll sit over here and eat my lentils. Oh man, I love you now. <laughs> I They're get buddies. twice the pie. <laughs> buddies. Oh man. Anyways, before we uh, get going with our AEW Revolution recap, uh really quickly, want to say thanks to everybody for hanging out with us during the yes. live stream. A bunch of new uh, uh subs, a bunch of new uh channel members, and of course all those channel members. They get the Friendo Club set up, which of course gets you access to bonus episodes. New Friendo cast going up uh, tomorrow because I forgot to put, I didn't forget, I didn't have time to put up this weekend. Uh, but it's all in the can. We filmed it. Episode number 10 is going up tomorrow. Uh, so you get access to bonus episodes. You get access to question threads for most of our recap episodes. And of course, you get access to the Big Blue Predictions Challenge. That's right, Muted May Day, a first-time predictions challenge participant. Now, Big Blue Predictions champion. Winner. So congratulations, Muted May Day. Uh, so uh, he's going to send a picture, which I will then put the Big Blue title on, and then we'll show it here on the episode. Uh, of course, Larson, the next Big Blue Predictions Championship. Oh, that's a major show. Uh, Might have heard of it. It's called a WrestleMania. It's called the WrestleMania. That's right. The WrestleMania. And, uh, of course, that is in itself a two-night event. So we have got a huge... We are looking to get over 300 people to participate in the big WrestleMania extravaganza there's going to be a prize on the line, maybe two. I whipped up. I'm trying. I'm waiting for it to get here, but uh, I got a new. I got a new hat. It looks great too. It's a you. You vetted it. You saw it. Yeah. You looked at it. Like uh, it but it hasn't hasn't come here in the mail yet. Uh, but that is uh, what uh, Mutant May Day is going to get, and then all the winners are going to get that. But I think for WrestleMania, maybe I got some extra in little mind. Special. A little special. Some special. A little extra uh, special. Yeah, so uh, there's two ways to get the Friendo Club set up. Number one, by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson. $5 a month gets you the Friendo Club set up. Or by clicking join right here at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Uh, that's $5 a month also. So same price. You get the same thing for either one. Exactly. Same stuff. Uh, before we get on the recap, we got over 1,000 people watching us here live on the YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. If you could please hit that like button. We like to get 50% or so likes uh, based on the audience for these live streams. So please hit that like button. It's validation for us. We'd like to be liked. We like our content it. to be liked. Yeah. Um, so please hit that like button. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks. It's the one that looks like a thumbs up. Not the thumbs no. down. Don't do Don't this hit one. that one. Do the thumbs up one. Yeah, exactly. Thumbs up. Yeah. Also hit that subscribe button if you want to be uh, if you want to be notified uh, for whenever there is a new Going In Raw episode. Yeah, we're trying to get to 201,102 subs. We've been kind of stuck around the 200,700 area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So man. we need about 400 more. Oh, up 12 from the last time I checked. Thank oh, you so nice. much, everybody. Awesome. Cool. Oh, 718. Awesome. Love to see it. Yeah, we're trying to get to 201, 102. Uh, but we're being patient because we dropped a couple. Uh, so, yeah, we're at 20718. That's a good number. Let's see if we can get that up to 20725 by the end of the review. So That'd hit that great. subscribe button, notify bell. Let's dive into it, Larson. What kicked off Revolution? Uh, the main card opened up with a TNT title match. He had Daniel Garcia taking on Christian Cage for Christian's TNT title. Of course, with Christian comes the patriarchy. You're talking Nick Wayne, Mother Wayne, Luchasaurus. 
so interference aplenty here in this match because of the, the numbers of the patriarchy. Uh, Daddy Magic tried to help Daniel Garcia at one point, and somehow, don't know how exactly, managed to chase Luchasaurus up the ramp, and take him out of the equation, but that didn't count for Nick Wayne or Mother Wayne. So down towards the finish, uh, after Daddy Magic appears, as said, he brawls up uh, the ramp with with uh, with Luchasaurus. Um, so then uh, Cage is looking for a spear. Instead, Garcia uh, uh, hits him with a pile driver, gets uh, gets a two count there. So then, um, wait, didn't Daddy Magic chase up uh, Luchasaurus up the ramp? Or am I imagining that? Uh, yeah, he did. No, he did. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Well, was somebody disputing that in chat? No, 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 no. Um, oh, sorry. I saw a kill switch here in the notes. I was like, oh, yeah, that's Christian's finisher. The move. The yeah, move. see, that's what it's It's just called the Unprettier. Hey, Chris Garrix, just note for you really quick. From now on, in the notes. No, just call Luchasaurus Luchasaurus. Hey, Chris Garrix, a little extra something from, from Steve here. Well, out of your cut, not mine. If you call it, it'll be both of our cuts. You call it the unpretty. Oh, I don't agree. To, I don't agree to off that. To the, off to the little off to the side. The unpretty. That. Anyway, so Nick Wayne hits Garcia from behind. Cage, uh, Christian Cage, not Brian Cage, follows with the kill switch to get the win. Pretty much what you'd expect. A well wrestled match. A lot of interference from the patriarchy. Uh, Christian has to cheat to win. Not what I expected. <laughs> oh, that's right. You expected Daniel Garcia. Maybe What's with this? Some help from Cope. When I saw this opening the show, I was like, "That ain't gonna happen." No. Uh, no, I was open. I was thinking, you know what, man? Uh, but okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. Well, you didn't watch I'm, the end of Collision. You didn't see Garcia chasing uh, Christian up the ramp. Yeah, you got that right, buddy. Uh, let me ask you about that, though. So, sure. Daniel Garcia, no TNT title for the Not moment. Yet. Not yet, no. Maybe more likely that Cope is going to come back and get the TNT title and have a proper run with it. You think so? I think that'd be a really strong idea. Because yeah. you got Roderick Strong, bad guy, with the international championship. Yeah. And then, you know, I like Christian and everything. I think he's great. He's the fun promo, the dead dad thing. It's hilarious, right? But here's the thing. Um, as far as, like, ever since Edge came back, the stories just aren't They're not there. Yeah. And I don't know if they're going to come back. So I kind of feel like that TNT title needs some fresh some fresh just life move to on. it. Move you on. know? Just move on. But also, on. You, got, you, you mentioned Roddy, heel champ. Christian heel champ, Joe technically, although fans love him, heel champ. Uh, uh, we don't know the fate of the tag champs championships yet. Yeah, right. Yeah, but they could very well end up in the hands of the Young Bucks. The heel trios champs. are faces, but yeah, they're with the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. So. Yeah, like Tony Storm again. Fans adore her work, but technically, technically heel bad guy. Yeah. Um, TBS, Julia Hart, heel. Basically, most of your champs are heels. Yeah, right. Something's got to give. So, have Cope win it. You got one babyface champ. That's fine. It's a good oh, name for the Eddie, TBS. Eddie, Eddie, the Eddie's TNT. Continental Crown champion. He's a face. Yeah, but Cope for the TNT. Too, that's a big name for yeah, a title yeah. that kind of needs something big happening to Especially it. Especially after know? the work Christian's done to rehabilitate the image of that title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't want to give it to a scrub like Daniel Garcia. I'm joking. Well, I, I love Daniel Garcia. I think Daniel he's Garcia great. Is great. He's, he's awesome. This is a fun match too. This it is was. a really this is a really fun match. Really, the only match that I didn't think necessarily delivered was the scramble. But by its very nature, is going to be a mess. <laughs> that shit. What did what you think I was going to deliver? <laughs> just entertainment. I thought at least a be bunch of mess. But it was a mess. It was a, it was just a massive mess. Um, but it wasn't not entertaining. At least you know what I mean. No, I thought it was plenty entertaining, but yeah. it was dumb. There was yeah. zero, there was no point to that match, dude. Really, except to get a title shot for Wardlow, you could have had a thousand other ways. Uh, next, we had the Continental Crown up for grabs. Eddie Kingston defending against Brian Danielson. Another hard hitting match between these two. The end sequence was phenomenal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, with Eddie getting the win, let's review what happened at the end. So uh, Danielson is hitting him with a bunch of kicks. And Eddie's like, come on, kick me. And the whole match, Danielson is wrecking Eddie's arm. So the first one hits Eddie in the chest. He's like, all right, come on, give me another one. Next one hits Eddie in the shoulder. And Eddie's like, all right, oh, gosh, this sucks. But yeah, give me another one. And so Danielson just keeps peppering him with kicks. And Eddie's trying to get to his feet. He's like, oh, he's putting his hand out. It's like, are you trying to wave him on for more? Or is he trying to say no more? It was hard mm -hmm. to tell. Yeah. Um, uh, and the, after that, though, uh, Eddie... Uh, Looks for a suplex. Danielson avoids it. 
that he looks for a suplex on Eddie. Eddie avoids it, but and ends up hitting Danielson with a half and half. So they're trading shots. Um, Eddie hits some quad kicks, but uh, uh, and then hits a sucker punch. So this whole stretch towards the end of the match too is Eddie couldn't use his right a- right hand because Danielson had jacked it up so much. So he's hitting like uh, back fists and punches and slaps with his left hand. It was great. Um, he looks for a power bomb. Danielson reverses that. He goes for another knee plus, and he counters that with the power bomb to get the W. So I I noticed, you know, don't think I didn't notice the extra stank on the Kawada kicks. Yeah. I think it's a trash move. No. And that conversation, opinion, you know, I, I appreciate that our, our journey through pro wrestling fandom is always an evolving one. And it's interesting during the stream, I had brought up the, uh, I hate those chops. Oh, the machine gun chops. It's all in the delivery. I think Eddie does them pretty well. Uh, if that's pretty well, then it's horrible because that's a stu- it's a horrible move. It's no. on par. It's uh, it's like right next to Tama Tonga's. Maybe Tonga Loa. Ta- oh, was it Tonga Loa? It was Tonga Loa. They did that to Okada. Yeah. Where that stuff. That. So it's on par with. <laughs> no, it's do, no. Do it again. You do it so good because <laughs> you look like the Burger King delivering a Whopper. What Tonga Loa did in that Okada match is miles, miles no, worse no. than Machine Gun Chops. On par with. Equal no. to or better than. It's no, the same you cannot thing. Compare the, no, you can't compare the two. When Eddie's doing the chops, it looks like there's a little something. It makes a noise. It's so stupid. I it hate it like so much. It looks like there's some force behind it. What Tonga Loa is doing to Okada, it's like his his fingertip on his middle finger was barely touching Okada. With Look, you're, you're right. Like, you're you're looked, right, of course. I like to give you fake. shit. You're right, of course. That's terrible. I, I'm not a fan of this. And then you brought up because it's kind of a similar thing, but with what with the, the with kicks. Kicking somebody in the head, yes. Yeah. And it looks so stupid because it oh, just doesn't great. look like you're doing anything. Oh, it's great. It's just I could sit there. It's hey, you want if you and I ever have a wrestling match, then we could do the machine gun chops and the and the little kawada kicks because sure. it doesn't do anything. It's just you're just sitting there. Well, I love them. I love them. It's ridiculous. You you more than just but anybody I know really embrace the ridiculousness of pro wrestling. There's there's a line though. There's totally a line. Some of the there's stuff t- that you appreciate is ridiculous. I feel like is well past that line. Like what may I ask? Uh, nothing comes to mind. All right, I'm putting some you on stuff, the spot. You're right. You're there's right. some stuff where you're like, oh, I appreciate the ridiculous and because I don't necessarily disagree. I'm just sort of curious if you had any loaded up, but we'll we'll think no, about I'm that. I'm sure one. something will come across our uh, come our way in, in the few in the next few weeks, and I'll be like, that you're cool with, but not someone unleashing a bunch of chops in rapid fire succession. Make that oh, make sense. Man. Oh man. Anyways, that's great. That's we're great. getting off we're getting off track. Steve after- making things make sense. I don't know, man. You might be asking a bit much. That, that's yeah, that's entirely possible. So after the match, Eddie's there. He's like, come on, shake my hand. And, and then Danielson's selling the power bomb. He really sold the hell out of it. And so Eddie's like, out oh, of hell with this. I'm leaving. And Danielson's like, no, no, stay, stay, stay. So he walks up to him with hand out. And then as Eddie is about to reach out, he pulls the hand back. And he's like, oh, the hell with this. I'm leaving. And he's like, no, I'm, yeah, sorry. That was I'm great. sorry. I'm sorry. And so he finally extends the hand. They shake it. And uh, Danielson raises Eddie's arm and then leaves the ring. So there's respect there. Perhaps friendship. I, dude, I'll be honest with you. If if we can get segments, you know, because one of the greatest things, that, one, of the, one of my favorite things about Brian Danielson outside of the ring, among the many things, is when he's with somebody who – gets him on the verge of laughing when he's with somebody who just, he wants to laugh. And I feel like Eddie could be that guy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so I hope that we do get a bit of an alliance between them on screen. Obviously Eddie and Mox have a ton of history. So that dynamic, if they continue along those lines could be really fun to explore. could be really interesting. It could be. Um, be. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed this match. You know, machine gun chops and quad kicks. You notwithstanding, still thought it was a really, really awesome match because both these guys are great. They are great. Uh, let's talk the eight man all star scramble. You got Hook, Lance Archer, Powerhouse Hobbs, Wardlow, Jericho, Dante Martin, Magnus, Magnus, Brian Cage, Atlantis, and Magnus. It was just, it was eight. So I, I'm wondering if they were going to do it like kind of Fucking like a gauntlet match, match type deal or, or you know, two people start and at intervals, more people enter the ring or anything like that. No, this is just an eight-way match, essentially. Well, First yeah, I mean, that, the win. 
if I recall correctly, like the scramble is just a fucking mess. Like you could have a scramble where they just throw like a title in there and everybody has to go after it. But I guess the scramble is just like everybody. Just... So I was reading up. So I was like, what's, what exactly are the rules for? I was hoping I could find definitive rules for a scramble. Because I was wondering, is this, this what they're called? Gauntlet? Yeah, so sure. So what'd forth. you find? I didn't look that far because I got distracted by something else. But I did find the rules for a championship scramble match in WWE, where it's a 20 minute. It was a time match, 20 minutes. And you get, it was for a title, an interim title. And throughout the match, you get a pinfall at that moment. You're an interim champion. Whoever ends the match with the last pinfall walks out of that as champion. See, that sounds awesome. I know. That's what I was hoping we were going to get tonight. That sounds great. But it's not. We just got an eight-way match. (laughs) Right, yeah. But it was an all-star scramble. Yeah. Would you consider everybody in this match an all-star? Jericho thinks he's above all-star. Yeah, no, he's not. That promo on Collision was kind of garbage. It was. Yeah. I don't like I don't like when like Wardlow's in there like trying to promo his heart out. And God bless him, he ain't very good at it. But he's and Jericho, trying. Jericho just sort of laughs off his points. Jericho needs to be afraid of this guy. Like if this I is going to be a successful deal, Jericho need, I feel like Jericho just sort of gave up caring. Anyways, um, it kind of feels that way, doesn't it? A little bit, yeah. But you know, it's funny because when we talk about it and then there's like I think it was Andrew Zarian was talking about how AEW is sort of looking at these key pieces that we talked about earlier as their future, rightfully so. Yeah. And I'm glad that they understand that. But it is time when you start phasing out, and I don't know how, what way, shape, or form, but like the Jerichos, and I don't know, I feel like Mox and Cloudy are probably going to be our next tag champions, to be honest with you, or FTR is going to fight them in the finals, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but I don't know, man. I, I I feel like the the Jerichos and just some of the older or we wrestlers the, who have been around yeah. since, since the beginning. I mean, at least the young. I know a lot of people don't like the young bucks, but at least the young bucks are like gimmick changing, pretty hardcore. Like they're, they're trying just to do something succession. different, yeah. right? And I mean, you got you got Danielson in his last year as a full time performer. Yeah, uh, Jericho. Yeah, he, he should probably be used far more sparingly than he is now. Uh, Mox has managed to stay relatively relevant. Same with Claudio. Um, you know, we don't know we're going to see Kenny Omega back. We don't know what his future holds, getting over diverticulitis. Yeah. Um, and so now is kind of an opportunity where you start really building for your future. Mm-hmm. And they've mm-hmm. got some really great names. Mm-hmm to build around in the future. And, you know, you, you see the swerve hangman story and that's, that's the right direction to go. You build up rivalries that can last for years and years and years. Yeah. 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 And you get people invested in that story. Um, but now they got to start doing that with more people and they're trying to with Wardlow and they've been trying to with Wardlow for two or three years. Haven't hit on anything. Um, and at least now he's going out dropping promos that feel more, a bit more genuine, maybe. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. Still has a little ways to go, but mm-hmm. it feels like a step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and maybe, you know, hey, he loses to Joe, whether it's clean or due to interference. And Adam Cole's really disappointed with them and kicks him out of the Undisputed Kingdom. And then he's feuding with them. And then who knows where that's going to go, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. So uh, Wardlow ended up winning uh, the All Star Scramble. Uh, it's sort of a mess, man. So Cage, Brian there's Cage, there's a lot going on in this match. A lot. There's a lot. So uh, Dante Martin ends up springboarding into a pounce by Wardlow. Hook sneaks in, goes for Red Rum, but Wardlow shakes him off and gives a lariat to Hook. He grabs Dante, hits a power bomb to get the win. But there was all sorts of shit. Like Archer had a decent showing. Hobbs did some cool stuff. Yeah. Magnus seemed barely even in it. Jericho honestly seemed kind of barely in it. Yeah. Like yeah. there really wasn't a lot. It was it was mainly the the Meat Madness guys that were in it. And Dante. And there was, there was a Hook. moment where where all four of the, you know, probably four of the guys mm-hmm. that would have been in the full on Meat Madness match. You had Archer, you had Cage, you had Hobbs, and you had Wardlow. Mm-hmm, yeah. Had a moment fairly early on the match where we got like a little bit of a an appetizer for the full on meat madness whenever that happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this is breakfast. It's a scramble, Indeed. and then uh, I, I'm assuming meat madness is going to be dinner. Yeah. So, what would be the lunch match? 
You know, you got to come with a stipulation that's like revolving around a sandwich. I was thinking a sandwich match of some sort. Sandwich yeah. match. But how would you do a sandwich match? Oh, man, you got a stack, fools, Larson. How about this? It's it's like World War Three with the three rings. Oh. And, and oh. you all start in the center ring. Yeah. It's like and the, the idea is get everybody out in the two outside rings be the last one in the center ring. Oh, I like that. You got to be the last part in the sandwich because everybody yeah. else is in the bread. Exactly. That's good. Uh, next up, we had Roderick Strong versus Orange Cassidy for the international championship. I mean, if if Osprey and Takesta wasn't on this card, this would probably be my match of the night. Roderick Strong has always been like one of my ties ever since you know basically NXT. I know he, I didn't really pay attention to his shit before then because I didn't watch Ring of Honor back then. I still don't. But uh, but man. He has long time been one of my favorite in ring guys, and this match just showed exactly why. Yeah. This this stuff with him and Orange Cassidy, talk about a guy who makes it look real. Roderick Strong is that guy. He really yeah. is. I liked this match so much. I thought it was awesome, um, and it gives a bit of a reset to a title that. And I like Orange Cassidy, so don't take this the wrong way if you're a fan of Orange Cassidy, because I am too. The title run just does nothing for me. I thought they were telling like a cool story with it at like a certain point. Like when he won it back, it was, man, I'm willing to go to a certain length. And I thought he was going to start breaking out of that character a little bit because yeah. he was so coveting the gold. But they never with his they never really go all the way with any story that they're going to tell with Orange Cassidy. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm not sure either, because it seemed like that might be the direction they were headed or for a spell. It was almost. And this was me kind of trying to make sense of it. Are they telling the story where now that he has it back, he's kind of dodging, defending it a little bit? Like, oh, I'll be in these tag matches instead of defending this, this title. But nothing really seemed to stick. They would maybe allude to something or go in one direction briefly and only to change course. Um, but yeah, Roderick Strong, like in terms of he's talking about urgency, moves mattering. I mean, so much of basically all of his offense, Roderick Strong is focused on wrecking his opponent's back, setting him up for his finisher. And he's such a, a, a explosive, dynamic performer in the ring. and so creative with how he gets his spots and his moves in that it never feels formulaic when you, like, you go into a Roderick Strong match, you know you're going to get a bunch of backbreakers. Mm -hmm, yeah. But the way he delivers them, yeah, and like the spot where he basically power bombed Orange Cassidy on the top turnbuckle, yeah, didn't see that coming. That no, that was like awesome. he finds creative ways to kind of tell a similar story match to match, and you're always invested. Yeah, he's a hell of a seller too. It's not like it's strictly all from the offensive side. No, dude, he looks like he gets wrecked in his matches. He like him really, and Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, those two guys. Yeah, which speaking of which, so. The finish to this match saw Orange Cassidy charging up for an orange punch. Even Orange Cassidy was like bringing the level of intensity because I think Roderick Strong was well, there. Had, like because Roderick Strong spent twelve minutes destroying his back for the whole match. He had to be there writhing and trying to muster. But up even what, yeah, even stuff left. like yeah. him when he drops uh, when uh, it says Orange Cassidy here uh, charged up for an orange punch, but Roderick Strong catches him with a backbreaker. He avoids the beach break, but he runs into an orange punch. And that looked so flush. It did. It, it did. looked so damn good. It did. Uh, orange Cassidy can't hit a beach break, but manages to use the ropes to hoist him up and hit it for two as Roderick Strong gets his foot on the rope. Orange Cassidy goes for an orange punch, but collapses. He fights through the pain, runs into a beautiful flying knee, and then a suplex backbreaker by Roderick Strong covers, gets the win. Uh, and then afterwards, the kingdom celebrating uh and they hoist him up he's the new champion and then this dude shows up from the crowd and first i was like is a fan getting in the ring it was long-haired kyle o'reilly yeah yeah uh, he shows up wearing looks like a t-shirt and some shorts and then him and roderick strong have a little bit of a stare off and then they hug it out they offer him him bennett takes off his kingdom shirt his undisputed kingdom shirt and uh and he, and he gives it they give it to him because they're like hey join us and he takes it and he just has this look on his face like, man, I appreciate it, but no. Puts it back on Roderick's shoulders, whispers something to him, and then he walks off. Yep. So back to Von Wagner into the forest, maybe? I don't know. I mean, he looked like he just came from the forest training with Von Wagner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's – it's when when you get the, the Undisputed Era guys together, whether they're feuding or, or working together, odds are something interesting is going to happen, so – 
I'm um, looking forward to this, man. Same. I don't know what it's going to be, but uh, this looks this looks really big. Again, Fightful Select had a report on uh, on Kyle O'Reilly, yeah. so uh, be sure to check that out. They Definitely. do a lot of good work over there. They do. They do. Uh, after that, we had a tag match, aforementioned tag match, FTR, taking on Blackpool Combat Club members John Moxley, yeah, Claudio Moxley. Castagnoli. Gnoli. Uh, fantastic. Just absolutely fantastic stuff here. The pace. Fa- unreal. Dax bleeding all over the place. Um, and a fairly surprising outcome. Um, so at one point, uh, FTR, they hit uh, uh, Mox with a shatter machine. They cover. Claudio pulls Dax off the pin. Cash goes for a suicide dive, but then Claudio hits him with an uppercut. And then a neutralizer on the floor. And then uh, Dax hits Claudio with a pile driver on the floor. He gets in the ring. Avoids a Death Rider from Moxley. He looks for a pile driver. Mox avoids that. Mox hits him with the Death Rider, gets a two count there. Um, Dax reverses out of the kick out into a pin, gets a two. Mox goes for the Bulldog choke. Uh, Cash kicks Claudio off, but then he sprints. And and so Claudio has the, the choke on Cash as well. And then Dax passes out. He's just bleeding all over the place. Mm-hmm, yeah. Blackpool Combat Club get the win, and they had LOD shoulder pad for their entrance. Oh, those were so ugly. They, they were. They looked so bargain basement. Yeah, don't do they that really again. Did. But they, they, um, they, it was win entrance for them. <laughs> it was a win entrance. Hey, it worked. I you guess know, you think works. about it though. With Road Warriors, most dominant tag team of the '80s, like they never lost. Yeah. So I guess we should have saw it coming. No, not with those. Uh-uh. No, if anything, I look at those. I'm like, that looks like. El Riz, know. huh? <laughs> yeah, El Riz of Doom, yeah, Legion of El Riz. <laughs> um, so let's talk about this really quickly. The tag championships, who knows what's going to happen with them. Yeah. FDR taking the loss here. Obviously, they're tag team guys. Um, yeah. You see them revisiting this in what clearly is going to be a tournament? Yeah, you'd think so. At some point, whether it's the finals or the semis, you'd think they would, yeah. I mean, because you can't, you can't dispel the notion that the Young Bucks are going to get in the tag team picture, too. Yeah. I mean, if they could do the finals, do the Young Bucks versus uh, FTR. You got, yeah, you could do that. Um, I mean, private parties just sort of coming back onto the scene. They're probably going to be in the mix somehow, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, honestly, if they're smart, LAX would make a push to get back together. <laughs> because I don't think that's working out. They should have Danielson and Eddie Kingston be a tag team. Oh, I'd love it. I'd love it. I think that'd be awesome. That'd be be great. That'd be amazing. Uh, Next, we had the women's title match, Deanna Pratza, challenge and champion, Tony Storm. So there was a bit of uh, attempts at trickery during the show. So so Deanna makes her entrance first. There's a long shot, and they kick in Tony Storm's old theme and Tron, yeah. And then it's a long shot again, and then you see someone walking out dressed in Tony Storm's old gear, and then they go to the the, the closer shot. You're like, oh, that's Mariah May. So I will say this. She did the walk out dead on perfect. Yeah. Dead on perfect. But then, yeah, the closer you get, it's like, wait, hold on. That's not. No, that's okay. Mariah May. Yeah. It's Mariah May. Uh, and then actual timeless Tony Storm yes, comes out. Hit her theme. She makes her entrance. A little bit of mind games there because that's obviously the the Tony Storm that Deanna Peraza was yes. friends with back in yes. the day. Good and stuff. And so much throughout this match, you had Deanna. Of course, she's a fantastic technical wrestler and Tony trying to keep up with Deanna Peraza and at times doing so. At times, not so much. Um, and uh, at the end, she needs, she needs, Tony needs some help to get the win here. Um, so the finish, uh, Tony, eventually she gets an ankle lock on Deanna. Deanna rolls through, kicks Tony to the apron, and then boots her off the apron into the arms of Luther. And then she goes up top, hits them with a crossbody to the floor. So she puts Storm back in the ring um, and then looks for an arm bar. Uh, Deanna blocks a roll through, but Tony rolls her up, gets a two. She's looking for the Venus de Milo, but Luther gets on the apron. Um, oh, sorry, Luther distracts. That allows Mariah May to get on the apron to distract Deanna. She lets go of the move. And De- and while the rest distracted, Tony's tapping the Venus de Milo. Yeah. She's tapping. So but when Deanna sees Mariah gets on the apron, she releases the hold. She turns around. Tony hits her with the Storm Zero to get the win. That's right. Yeah, good match. I like this match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, after this with them, 
I mean, obviously there's like, you know, some, some cheaty stuff here. Mercedes yeah. is coming in. Yeah. I'm not sure where Deanna lands in terms of like getting a rematch. Maybe, maybe they do it again. Uh, just for good measure. I mean, I feel like this feud's been going on a while. It'd be a shame if they just did the one and done. You know? I know. I mean, based on the fact that Tony tapped here, you'd think there'd be an avenue by which they can do another match. Um, you know, I know Mercedes coming in, it seems like, based on especially Serena Deep's promo on Collision, that that's going to be uh, Mercedes' first feud. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you'd think that they would allow Deanna and, and Tony to have another match because I think the the story so far and the performances have been all really good here. They've they've invested a lot of time in it. You know, yeah. you figure you want to get a little bit more out of it, huh? Yep. Uh, I mean, they could do like a submission match, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, we had Kanosuke Takeshita versus Will Osprey. Man, this is just one of those matches. We've talked about it. You got to go check it out. It's it's absolutely phenomenal stuff. There's a brain buster on the top turnbuckle, Steve. People watch it. There's a brain buster on the top turnbuckle. It's you don't see that very often. Go out it's of your amazing. way to watch it. That it's alone awesome. gets it five stars. Everything yeah, else yeah. that happens is just... Yeah, adds that up. was cool. I mean, I'm five stars at the top of my rating scale, so guess what this is going to get? Five stars. Um, Which, so, by the way, you'll be able to get our star ratings for this Tomorrow. tomorrow that's right next day not like those other, other guys, guys over at friendo club wrestling yes see him tomorrow so uh at one point Takeshita hits his running knee osprey kicks out so uh, Takeshita drops the knee pad looking for another osprey catches him hits him with a super kick a stunner looks for a storm breaker Takeshita blocks that and reverse this is so dang seamless and and uh hits like his his reverse a uh, tomb, uh, tombstone type deal. Will pops back up and just blasts Takeshita. Blasts him. Talk about explosiveness. Blasts him with a hidden blade. Takeshita kicks out a one. Yeah, that was rad. So uh, he looks for another Stormbreaker. Osprey does. Takeshita escapes that. They both hit each other with rolling elbows. Um, then Takeshita just destroys Osprey with a lariat. Osprey. Then hits the Styles Clash. He goes for another Stormbreaker, but instead hits the Tiger Driver 91. That's where he drops them right on their head, kind of. <laughs> this one wasn't as bad as the Omega one. Yeah, the Omega one was gnarly, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, he follows that with another huge hidden blade to get the win. Kind of surprised there wasn't any uh, 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 attempts on Don Callis' part to interfere on Takeshita's behalf, but maybe that'll happen on Wednesday because after the match... Kyle gets in the ring, checks on Takeshita and Osprey, and then Kyle Fletcher makes his way down to ringside. Um, Osprey goes and checks on Takeshita there. You know, have a good moment. Uh, Osprey bows to Takeshita. Fletcher gets in the ring, and they kind of a little bit of a stare down, and then they announce that they're going to have a match Wednesday on Dynamite. Mm-hmm, yeah. They eventually hug, and they threw up their United Empire signs. Well, I feel like, don't you think there's got to be some sort of, like, in story explanation why Don Callis yeah, would yeah, want to yeah. jump out the guy who's like clearly going to go on a win streak here in I AEW. Know, I know, I know. Like the, I, I half expected the Callis family to jump out to Keshta for losing yeah. to Osprey, and Osprey sitting there like, "What the hell is going on right now? Yeah. Why are you doing this?" and having a problem with it. Um, something like that, you would think, is going to end up because this is you know, and it wouldn't surprise me if Osprey very sort of reluctantly ran with the Callis family for a little while until there is some sort of inciting incident. But yeah, you totally, gotta have totally. some you gotta totally. have something in there. I know? mean the way they're that Osprey is presenting himself to the crowd is super babyface. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Super yeah. babyface crowd. Not the guy who comes out to a brown note, yeah. No, not the guy who comes out to the brown note theme and and, and needs help to win, you know? He's he's not a heel right now. It's only a matter of time before he's out of the Callis family. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we had the world title match Swerve taking on uh, Hangman taking on Samoa Joe and uh, you know we mentioned the finish and this is something that we talked about weeks ago but possibility of the idea that Paige is in the clutch he sees Swerve with an opportunity to break the hold or do something instead of giving Swerve that opportunity to take advantage taps out and yeah w- would it be great or not don't know um it would have it would have added a little extra oomph to the finish, you know, just a little extra. I think something that, yeah, along those lines. I don't know if that like does a lot. Like I like the idea, 
but I could see people shitting all over it if it actually happened simply because it's like, well, why would Hangman want to lose? Why would he, you know, like well, you always you, want you'd to have to play it up in a situation where Hangman knows he's done, he's lost. And uh, assuming Swerve doesn't break it up, but he sees the opportunity, like if Swerve breaks this up, he's going to win. Swerve mm -hmm. is going to win. Yeah, yeah. You'd really have to set up the spot like perfectly for it to work. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Which is difficult, you know, given you got to shoot stuff on the fly and whatnot. I get it. But I thought it could have been an interesting story beat where you have Swerve trying to get in there to break it up and Hangman sees it. It's like, oh, well, no, the tap. This deranged Hangman character is really Fantastic. a delight. And that's why I think something like that could have really won be, or could have really been good because he has basically been going crazy. You yeah. know, that, that so focused promo, he, on. Yeah. that backstage promo on Collision was really yeah. great. Do I look injured, dumbass? Do I look injured, dumbass? Of course, I'm in the match. He's so, so obsessed with making sure Swerve is a champ. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it drives him nuts. There's this point where, so uh, 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 one of the, the, Excuse me. More interesting aspects of this match is that Hangman was 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 uh, uh, beaten up on referees. <laughs> kept on beating up refs because they kept, kept on, on coming, getting close to giving Swerve the win. Exactly. Um, so he, let's see here. So early, or not early on, but towards the end, Swerve hits the stomp on Joe. Ref starts counting the pin. Page pulls, uh, I think it was Paul Turner, out of the ring. And Paul Turner just lands with a thud. He's out. So Hangman gets the belt. He gets he gets in the ring and hits Swerve with it, hits him again with it down on the floor. While Joe's still selling the stop, it's entirely possible if he would have hit Swerve with the belt once, hit Joe with the belt, bang, you're, he's champ. Yeah. So well, that, the ref was out though. That's but, true because that came into play. That came into play here yeah. in a second. So that he hits Joe with a buckshot, no ref. Second ref rolls out, uh, runs out, counts. Joe kicks out. So Paige is pissed off. He's looking for a third buckshot, misses. Joe locks on the clutch. Uh, Swerve breaks that with like a tornillo. Mm -hmm. um, and then Swerve uh, gets the, the crown from Prince Nana. He's looking at it. because That's why he beat Paige the first time. He, again, throws it aside. He's like, I'm, I don't need it. I'm going to win this. So Joe uh, puts the clutch on Swerve. Um, Swerve rolls him up, gets a two there. Um uh, but as he's kicking out, Paige goes over there and starts blasting Bryce Remsburg, who was the second referee. Mm -hmm. He throws him out of the ring. So he and Swerve are going at it. Um, flies back in, hits a buckshot on Swerve, I believe. No, Swerve hits the buckshot on. Yeah, it was like, he was like up top and he did it. Yeah, yeah he, he did, did it off the top. Yeah. So then Joe wipes out Hangman and puts Swerve on top looking for to be a muscle buster. Swerve blocks it. Uh, Page hits a buckshot on Joe, and then Swerve hits. Uh, oh, this is where Swerve hits the buckshot on Hangman, and then the JML driver. Um, he's about to cover. Joe grabs him, hits a half and half suplex, and then Joe puts the clutch on Page, and Page taps out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Be interesting to see if they write out Hangman in a segment on Dynamite, mm -hmm. or if he just mysteriously disappears. I know, mysteriously disappears. Mysteriously disappears. He might just, they just might just film something backstage tonight and then he's gone. Mm -hmm. um, that's when they announce uh, the new pay per view called Dynasty. I need to you remember what the uh, like. Dynasty theme sounds, sounds like. Dun, 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 Hey, was there, all, in my mind, in growing up in the 80s, you yeah, know, right. whatever night Dallas was on, it was it was a block. Of, it was Dynasty. You remember Falcon Crest? I remember Falcon. Well, I mean, I, I remember the name. I don't remember yeah. seeing it, though. Were they all, like, back to back to back, or is that just in my mind? Oh, dude, I don't know. Because, like, uh, we moved to England when I was, like, seven. Yeah. My memories of, like, blocks of TV are non-existent before that, that age and once we moved sense. to england like it's you know it's air air force tv yeah, yeah you know watch you know the classics from 1984 and it's like 1986 already yeah yeah the hell am i watching I the commercials but i remember I mean, like i never really watched i never watched dynasty or falcon's crest falcon crest i think my parents may have watched dallas i watched the shit out of dallas yeah that was awesome larry hagman was the man jr ewing 
J.R. Ewing was the man. J.R. Ewing. Uh, then we got our main event for the tag titles, Sting and Darby. Sting's retirement match taking on the Young Bucks. Wrong way. Come on, Steve. Did I do it right? Did I do it right? You did. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, of course, this is uh, this match was mayhem. It was crazy. You had Sting's kids, one dressed as Surfer Sting. Again, they did the long shot. You see Surfer Sting come out. I was like, oh, Surfer Sting. Sting did Surfer Sting. <laughs> you pop so big for that. <laughs> Not as much as I did for the top rope brain buster. <laughs> um, and then his other kid is Wolfpack Sting, and then yeah, Sting reluctant Wolfpack Sting. The yeah. other, the Wolfpack Sting looked like he was a little self conscious. The other dude was full on. He was like, "I'm next in succession for Sting." Exactly. <laughs> if they if they cast a new Sting, it's me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, uh so he had a lot of the typical stuff where Sting gets put through a table, no cells, gets right back up. He had the spot with Darby where he sets up this humongous ladder and there's a pane of glass set up uh, amongst a bunch of chairs. He looks to put Nick Jackson through it. Nick gets out of the way of the help of Matt and Darby just eats it. He's like 15 feet in the air, just eats it through the glass. He's got a giant gash. It was like huge, on his yeah. left shoulder blade. It looked it nasty. Gnarly. He's just bleeding all over the place. And he was out of the match to the very finish. Cause you know, he, he, he got back up. He had a bunch of rib tape on. You know, it's one thing, the glass, obviously, it leaves him all bloody and a massive cut in his back. But, gosh, falling that far you could break ribs. You could break your pelvis. You could break all sorts of bones. It's frightening. Frightening. Yeah, Anyways. it's Darby. I know. He always <laughs> manages to get up. I don't know how. He I don't does. know. I, I just so you know, dude, I have a hard time watching it. I do because I'm squeamish and I don't want to see anybody get, like, hurt. Yeah. But at the same time, this is Darby. Like yes, yeah, that's his thing. I'm sure he's oh, he's he's yeah. a, he's an he's an adult. He he'll figure. Sorry, Sean Ross. <laughs> Sean Ross. I'm looking. Somebody mentioned that, that uh, Sean Ross Sapp had pictures of Darby because he Sean was there. Yeah, Sean was. And there. <laughs> he's got this great picture. Let's see if I can. He's got this great picture of Rick, Flair, <laughs> Rick Flair. Oh, laying in the ring. Yeah, laying in the ring after the got super, super kicked, kicks, and he's like. He's not resting. Oh, because there's glass right there. So he's not, his head's not down on the mat. That's why his head was like up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, but his yeah. eyes were closed. I know. Oh, um, man. Before the match began, they, you know, Darby makes his entrance after the Young Bucks. And then before Sting does, they had this, this really well put together little short movie. I wonder if Darby did it where Sting is sitting in a theater and there's a recap package essentially playing of his career and he's reacting to it. Oh, it was awesome. And at the end, he just kind of says, and, and like it, like the tone of his line delivery is pitch perfect. It was. He said, well, it's showtime for one last time. Yeah. It's so good. So he makes his entrance, match starts. It's just craziness to begin with. As soon as Darby gets in the rink, he lays out the Young Bucks with a suicide dive and like basically busts the announce table in half. It's crazy. Um, you have Flair, you have Steamboat get involved. Uh, Flair ends up beating a couple super kicks, as does Steamboat. Um, so then uh, they, they, uh, the Young Bucks hit Sting with a stereo super kicks. Sting gets right back up. He clotheslines them, hits a Scorpion death drop on Matt, gets a two, throws Nick out of the ring. Uh, but they eventually kick, uh, catch him with an EVP trigger. Sting kicks out. So they go for another one, hit it. Sting kicks out at one, and he gets up. He starts laughing, pounding on his chest. He eats double super kicks. They're setting up for not the Meltzer driver, TK driver. And that's when Darby gets up finally, pushes Nick off the top rope through a table set up ringside. Sting hits the scorpion death drop on Matt. Matt kicks out. And Darby, who's just covered in blood, just bloody all over his back, uh, goes up, hits Matt with a coffin drop. Sting locks on. Scorpion death drop on Matt. Matt taps. Sting and Darby win. So then after the match, Darby grabs a mic and he says, we got three minutes left. Let's give Sting the respect he deserves. So the crowd's chanting for Sting. Sting takes the mic, says, thank you, Greensboro, to be honest. I've been thanking you all since March of 1988. Nature Boy, Sting, 45-minute title or draw for the title. Thank you, Rick. Greensboro, you were incredible in 88 and beyond. I said, I just wanted this to be a night wrestling fans will not forget. A night that will be etched for years to come. And it is me that is... And it is me that is saying that is a night I will never forget. Thank you, Greensboro. This is definitely time to give thanks to the greatest tag partner I've ever had, Darby Allen. He says he looks at his giant gash on his back. He's going, I wonder how many stitches that's going to require. Yeah. 
Darby grabs the mic from him and says, I said I would die in your last match, but I'm breathing. And that's what Sting says. I was a risk taker like Darby when I was younger. I'm still a risk taker. Since I'm in, in, here in Greensboro, and Darby's like whispering to him, and the, the clock's ticking on on the, 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 the nine o'clock when they have to go off the air. And so Sting's like, all right, all right. He says, well, hold on, I'm getting cues. And you get the copyright thing, and that's the last words that Sting says on <laughs> official AEW <laughs> television. <laughs> Hold on, I'm, you know, man. I see a lot of people complaining on Twitter that, like, oh, you couldn't give them an overrun. Pay per views have a heart out. They do. I don't think that, like, techn like technologically speaking, you can just pick up a phone. I don't think. I'm pretty sure this is the case. Way. I don't believe you it can't works just that way. be like, give me five more minutes. And in fact, when they started the thing, I don't even think, I've, unless I'm completely mistaken, and maybe Tony Khan has mentioned this in the in the scrum. I don't know. He did just vacate the titles, the tag titles. Oh, Darby he said did. there's going to be a tournament. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but they meant the fact that they mentioned, "Hey, we've got three minutes left in this pay per view," says to me that maybe they wrapped that match three minutes early, and that like the celebration, the promo might not have been planned, yeah. or maybe. The the match went a little bit longer than they expected, and there was they thought they'd have more time. But the Could bottom be. line is pay per views. I don't think they have the ability. Like remember, the, the WCW cut like uh, what was it Goldberg the main event Goldberg and DDP? Yeah, from a pay per view. Halloween having ninety eight. Yeah, because Hogan um, and Warrior went ran over. Yeah, I think that's just always been the thing. Yeah, it's a hard out on pay per view. Yeah, you're scheduled for that block, and that block ends, you're out. I think. Yeah, I don't even think you know the. The, the business acumen of Tony, the business influence of Tony Khan can change that. Nope. nope. All in all, a fun show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sid Softball hat bat here, member for 12 months, says, I ran to Wardlow at, in the airport. He bought me a pizza. Later, I got a compliment, the up, complimentary upgrade and sat next to him from Charlotte to Greensboro. Now, that's a story. That is a story. Why did he buy this person a pizza? I am curious about that. Great Muda has a good point. I liked it ending on a cut just for the WCW-ness of true. it. That's he should have said, we gotta go. We're out of time. Robin Hood's Robin next. Hood's next. <laughs> Shivani should have done that. That'd been great. I agree. I agree. Oh, here we go. What is this? Darby Allen versus Jay White at AEW Big Business. Oh. That's cool. Oh. Right on. Yeah, Jay White needs to get out of. He needs to get yeah. out of that stuff. I know. I know. I'm just waiting for that turn to happen because he's driving Max Caster crazy. It needs to happen soon because yeah. them being a unit together drives me crazy because Jay White should be doing cooler shit. Everybody everybody in that crew should be doing cooler shit. I know. I know. So, um, anyways, that's it for our review. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. We appreciate it so much. Oh, they're giving me cues. <laughs> 